Thank you. All right. So I will uh, at 701 tonight call to order the January 14th, 2021 uh, meeting of the uh, Community Preservation Committee of Town of North Andover. I'll begin by reading our preamble as required by uh, by the, the statute. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 18, and the Governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the North Andover Community Preservation Committee will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information in the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the town's website at www.northandovermass.gov. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to watch the meeting may do so on their televisions by tuning to Comcast Channel 8, Horizon Fit Channel 26, or online at www.northandovercam.org. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be, will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we'll post on the Town North Andover website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. Uh, I am, Julian has asked I do a roll call too of everyone who is, uh, who is currently in attendance. Um, so I'll just gonna run through that right now. Uh, Rick Green? Yes, here. CJ Ganji? Here. Frank McCarty? Here. John Simons? Here. Bill Callahan? Uh, Bill, you're on mute. <coughs> you good now, Bill? No, still on mute. Sorry. Here. Now there you go. Yeah. Uh, John Maven? Here. Uh, and Dan Beckley as our uh, staff representative. I see you, Dan. Great. Uh, looks like absent are Terry Holland and Tracy Watson. Um, first, before we go uh, into executive session, I do want to welcome John Maven as our new member, uh, as the representative from the uh, Conservation Commission. So, John, I, I understand this is a, uh, a second tour of duty as John. Put it. Yes, it is. It's uh, it's my pleasure to serve again uh, on the Community Preservation Committee. Well, th thank you for joining us. Uh, we're, we're excited to have you. So, uh, with that, uh, we're going to move into executive session, uh, which my understanding is that this will uh, the broadcast will cease uh, or will be muted uh, on the live broadcast, uh, so that we can have our uh, our executive session uh, in private. So, uh, Ray, if you, if you would go ahead and uh, move us to executive session. Excuse. You'd want to make a uh, take a motion to go into executive session for the purposes of discussing litigation. Got it. Sorry. Thank you. Um, can someone make a motion for me? I can't. I can't make my own motion. Yep. Bill, you want to make a motion? move to go into executive session. Thank you. Second. Uh, okay. Great. We had to do a roll. Rick. Yes. CJ. Yes. Frank. Yes. John. Yes. Yes. Bill. Aye. Uh, John Maven? Yes. Okay. Uh, it, the motion passes unanimously. Sorry. Now we can move in. Okay. Resuming uh, the January 14th, 2021 CPC meeting for the town of North Andover. Um, out of executive session, we'll move to the next item on the agenda, which is the discussion of the uh, parking lot proposal for 635 Osgood Street. Um, Dan, uh, I don't know if you want to kind of talk us through where we're at right now and, and give everybody updates so we can get any final decisions that you need. Sure. Um, so let, let me know if you have trouble hearing me and my connection's been a little spotty. Um, I can hear you. So, right. There's, um, in everyone's packets, there's three different um, possible options for a parking lot at the Usler property, which has now been assigned an address. It's six, um, I believe that's 635, no, six. I thought it was assigned 635. I will uh, double check that, um, but these all say 600. Anyways, um, there's three options. I know back in the fall, I think you guys had decided on, um, 10 on one, 10 parking spots on one side with the option to add 
another 10 on the other side of the aisle in the future. Um, that is shown on the file uh, proposed gravel parking lot. Um, regardless of what we do, there would either need to be site plan review or a waiver of site plan review. But if we started with five spots with the option for 10, um, it's a little bit closer to what would, um, you know, not trigger plan review. It's the five, five new spots trigger site plan review um, in this area, yeah. in addition to a couple other things. Um, and then another option is five on both sides. Um, that's shown in Oswood 623 final version and alternate two. Um, so you start with five on both sides of the aisle, and then there's the option to add another five on both sides of the aisle. Um, that's the most recent design. Um, our feeling is that um, if you want to have 10 to start, having five on both sides is probably less obtrusive than starting with 10 running all the way into the property um, to begin with. But this is um, really up to you guys, and you know whatever you decide is what I will take to the planning board. Yeah. All right, so, so just to, to kind of summarize what you're proposing here is uh, you need a decision from us. Do we go with, uh, you know, five to start with a future five or 10 to start with a future 10? Uh, and just based on the configuration, do you want 10 all in a row or five back to back with a future five back to back? Right. Does everyone understand the, uh, what's, what's in front of us right now? Okay. All right. Um, Anyone have any questions, thoughts about how they'd like to proceed with this? Well, I guess my my point with something like this, and this is sort of from a lot of planning board experience, and and Jack might be able to look at it from the perspective of uh, the conservation commission, is that it's it's generally easier for something this to to believe it or not to build it a little bit smaller to begin with and then if you need more add more than to go the other way uh because you don't want to overdo it to have an empty sort of thing and so you know i i think the plan is good and plan is solid but you know i always opt to lean on the side of 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 the minimal amount that we need but with the capability of expanding further yeah. And is, is that, so your thought would be, okay, but, but do you permit it all at once? Is that the idea? Yeah, you can permit, yeah, permit it all at once. I mean, like a lot of times the planning board is you permit something that you don't build it all together, right? You know, to basically, you know, like the planning board, what you say is come back, you tell people build something, come back in a year, and if it's not adequate, you got to put the rest of the parking in uh, because you don't always know in advance what it's likely to be, but really that's that's what I think we should do here is have the capability of putting in the full amount, but don't put it all in the front if we're not sure we're going to need it. Yeah. Any other thoughts? I, I would agree with that. I think that's, I, I think that's a good way to go. <clears throat> So this, this is Terry. I, I would I would agree with that. Also, the only thing I, I ask is, do we leave the do we leave that um, open so that we can reach in for more money if we decided to go later? Yeah, I, I don't I don't know what the what this is anticipated to cost. I believe we've got twenty four thousand dollars or so for this project available. Um, so your, your thought is, Terry, you know, do you leave it open for a period of time, maybe even a couple of years if needed, if, if the demand ends up being there? Is that your thought? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I think it seems reasonable. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So is everyone on board with, um, I guess it's, you know, alternate two, which is the, uh, 10 spaces closest to Osgood Street with any future ones then penetrating further into the par property? Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, <clears throat> Brian, uh, I'm, this is this is Jack Maven. Uh, I'm going to abstain from this vote because I'm uh, I don't have the materials uh, and 
um, I apologize for that. I, I didn't realize that there were materials available for this. So um, I really don't know what we're voting on, and I feel that I should probably abstain at this point. Okay. No. No. No worries. I appreciate you saying that. So. Um, okay. Well, would someone like to make a motion on this one? I'll make a motion that the board opts for uh, the alternative to of uh, ten spaces to start with the capability of expanding. Okay. That was John Simons for the minutes. Uh, seconded. Anyone? Second. Second. Okay. Roll, roll call vote. Uh, Rick. Yes. CJ. Yes. Frank. Yes. John. Yes. Bill. Yes. Terry. Yes. And Jack, you're abstaining? Abstain. Great. All right. Uh, and I'm a yes. Uh, so that is a uh, motion passes. Okay. Uh, so, Dan, you should have what you need on that one at this point. Yep. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for your efforts on that. That's uh, really helpful to keep moving that forward. I really appreciate it. So, uh, all right. Next on the uh, our agenda is uh, the signage update. Um, the, you know, Rick and, and Terry, um, after last meeting, it had some follow-up discussions with uh, Dave Rimmer from the Greenbelt Association, specifically regarding the Glenny Woodlot, but I think we're going to carry that over into other projects. So uh, I don't know if Rick or Terry wants to take the lead on this one, but uh, the floor is yours. Sure, I, I can. Um, Thanks, Rick. I reached out to Dave after our, after our last meeting to find out if uh, we could work collaboratively with him and his design designer. It turns out that his sign designer is, is uh, fairly busy and would like um, would like to get more, really doesn't want to get too involved with it. She doesn't have the time for it, but when Dave sent back some questions um, that I thought we would discuss with the board before we move forward on the sign. I think probably by the next meeting, once I get some ideas. Uh, Terry and I can go back to Dave and we can kind of give him what our thought process is right now. But he had a number of questions. I certainly can go through each one, Brian, and we can discuss them if you want, or you can do that however you want to handle that. Yeah, well, why don't you go ahead and, and, and take it, Rick? Okay. So his first question was uh, Are we set on Glenny Wood Lot as the name? And I, I recall from our last meeting that I believe we were all in favor of that. Is yep, that correct? We'll on that in the minutes. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. His next question were, uh, was Are we set on a two sided hanging sign? No sign post installed yet. I know that he had talked about installing a pressure treated sign. I think we had no objections to that either. We told him to go ahead and install the, the post. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree. Yeah. Uh, some of these questions may veer off of the actual topic because this is more. His, more, his questions are more directed to uh, the Glenny Woodlot. We will apply in, in most cases going forward with the overall sign. So the next question he had to get into was, uh, what do you want below the property name? So he's, he wanted to know if we wanted North Andover, town of North Andover, something else. Um, I don't know if anyone has any thoughts on that. I think it would be nice to have North Andover. However, if you do look at the photo that Brian probably passed along uh, of the green belt, the typical green belt sign, you don't, you obviously don't see any North Andover colors. You don't see anything that says, uh, you know, let's say North Andover. But yeah, that's in everyone's project folder. You should see there's there's one from the Vineyard <laughs> Reservation. It looks like. Um, You know, I'll, I'll just jump in. I, I feel like this is one of those moments where we, we've we talked about making sure that, that not only the town, but CPC funding is referenced as a part of this since CPC funding was used to acquire it. So I, I think that would probably be the opportunity to do so, like we do with the playground signs. Um, but I'll put that back out to the floor. I would agree with that. Yeah, yeah. I, I would agree with that also. I think it should be recognized on the sign so people are aware where funding came from. Um, all right, so so I guess he's going to need specific language from us. I mean, I don't mind coming up with something. I had actually come up with something 
for a CPC project that I ended up withdrawing last year was basically new signs for all of the athletic fields with this with actually a QR code on it yep. the CPC. So I don't mind floating those ideas out to you guys. I just want to get a feel as to what we what we really want to see on the sign so we're not wasting anybody's time. Yeah, if possible, I mean, I'd really like to come to a decision tonight so we don't lose any more time so that the green belt can get on and do what they need to do. So um, if, if everyone's okay with that, I'd like to just discuss it now, come up with language that, you know, Rick can go back to them with and we have to wait another month. All right, All right Rick, so did you have some of that, that language handy that you'd use in other places? Or? Um, I have to probably see if I can pull it up. Um, okay. Basically, I think it was the uh, town of North Andover. We had a QR code on it, and uh, I think there was a line there that said "funded by CPC." Something, something simple. Um, obviously, the sign that's in the pack is is fairly small in nature. So, yeah, I mean, you know, so for we had talked about maybe having different language depending on the type of project, right? So we've got the playgrounds that I think for something like this, this is a, you know, permanently protected property, right? That's the, is that what we're trying to get across with this? I would say so, yes. You know, so so I would, you know, I'd say something to the effect of, and you know, again, no prior authorship here, um, you know, this land permanently protected through the use of town of North Andover, CPC fund, you know, Community Preservation Act funds. Everyone see, is that too wordy? I know we don't have a ton of room, but. Well, if the sign has to be a little bigger, I don't know what, I don't, I wouldn't limit ourselves to, okay. to, I mean, I think we have to say what we have to say, you know, if the sign has to be a few inches bigger then so be it. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, uh, I don't think from Dave's comments back, I don't think he was, He's limiting us on the size of the sign. He asked if the 24 by 24 sign was acceptable. That, that might be their standard, but that's not to say we can't go larger with a three by three or something to okay. get information on the sign that we want. Yeah, and, and I guess whatever language you come up with today, we're going to want to use in all future right creation projects. So right, yeah. I just um, I just found. I wish I'd found it before, but I just found a on the coalition website they have a bunch of different signs with you know one of them says like you know which is kind of good a town of you could put like a town of north andover community preservation project uh, and then a lot say you know this project is funded in part by the citizens of north andover through the community preservation act or it's brought to you by the community preservation act funding I mean, yeah, I, mean, I, I like for this one, you know, making note that this isn't this isn't a project, right? right. This is a, this was a, a protection, right? A, a right. conservation effort. So I, I think we should make note of that for these types of signs for this project. Mm -hmm. Anyone have any other suggestions for what they might want to see for language? I don't want to belabor it, but I want to get it right. Right. I thought what you said, Brian, sounded good. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. So, Rick, Rick, do you have that? You need me to reread it, or? Yeah, I, I think I have. This land is permanently protected through Community Preservation Act funds. Is that what you stated? Yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah. It'll say the town North Andover elsewhere on it, and we'll have the QR code, right? Right. right. Someone like to make a motion on that? Uh, sure, I'll make a motion. Uh, motion to approve the language updated by me and Brian uh, for the sign to go on the Glenny Wood lot. Okay, that was. Uh... That was Rick Green for the minutes. Mm -hmm. Do a second. 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 All right. Uh, roll call vote, Rick. 
Yes. CJ? Yes. Frank? Yes. John? Yes. Phil? Yes. Jack? Yes. And Terry? Yes. And I am a yes as well, so it passes unanimously. Okay. Um, Rick, do we need anything else uh, regarding this particular signage? Well, one of the questions you had too was the colors, whether we wanted to try to keep the colors of the, the green belt sign or we wanted to look at, you know, North Andover colors or, or other colors. Okay. Um, I think there was a sentiment from last meeting to, to keep the colors consistent with the town colors, the colors that we use. Um, I think that it definitely was a sentiment that I, that I got out of our last discussion. Um, who is going to end up designing this? Are we going to use one of our own in our own town designers? Do you think? You know, I, I probably could get Dawn at Dawn Sign Tech to draw us an image. Okay. I mean, that's what the, that's what the town purchases their signs. So um, she's done it for me before. Okay. We could do something. It, it doesn't sound like um, Dave's designer. Sharon has a lot of time to spend on this, so it might be something we look at that. That's not to say I know we don't want to hold up uh, <clears throat> Dave, and you know, I know we want to get this signed through, but uh, you know, again, want to want to make sure we're doing it right. So um, if everyone feels like we need to see a few things and, and vote on, we can take that approach. If we want to give guidance and let them, you know, let them run with it, we can. I take that approach as well. I don't know that this is necessarily needs to be a a matter of massive importance if we want to put the trust here in, in Rick and Terry to get this done. Sure. Everyone feel comfortable with that? Yep. Yep. Great. All right. Let's let's go ahead. Let's let's proceed that way. Okay. All right. We'll do that. All right. So I mean, that's that's good on Glenny Woodlot then at that point. Yeah, that's it. There was minor stuff like the font, but I don't think that's, I think we'll be able to work that out. Okay. Great. So I, I think what we'll do then is once we get that sign back, I mean, I say, please bring it back to us at the next meeting, because then we will at least know what our template is and we can make sure that we've reviewed all the other projects that are going to need similar signage, um, you know, whether it's Rolling Ridge or any others that are out there that we haven't signed yet. And what I'll, I'll plan to do is see if I can put together kind of a comprehensive list and uh, you know, John, I may tap you in the shoulders as well to remind me of the stuff I'm missing, um, so we can review them and, and make sure we've got uh, what we need. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Great. Okay. All right. Good. Okay, right. Um, I had on here uh, project middle review, um, and I'm now trying to remember why I put this on here. Um, Right now, our deadline, so everyone's aware, is February 5th. Um, not anticipating a ton of projects. Uh, I did have a conversation with Stan Limpert this week uh, regarding a potential application from the Historic Society um, and the, regarding the, the Schofield Mill project, uh, which the town has been, you know, which we funded, you know, last year through the town. I think they've got some uh, a lot of stuff they've uncovered through that project. So I, I expect Stan to come before us and, um, and, and have a, a proposal about the historic society getting involved in, in that project. Uh, CJ, I don't know if you have any insight into that. Do you want to share with anybody? No, I haven't heard anything about that. That's, okay. that's new to me. Yeah, I, 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 I guess it might be a good idea because I, I know last year the town manager was personally involved in this because, I mean, I had raised the question. We had... Uh, funded Schofield Mill uh, a decent amount of money, I think five, six years ago, I forget exactly when, and then they came back for more last year and they explained it very well. It's just, you know, you always want to be in a position where, you know, they limit the trips to the well, I guess. And I, I, I don't know, again, you know, what the scope of it is. So I, I don't need to, uh, you know, to dump on it, but you know, it would be good to have the town manager make sure she's in the mix on this because she was directly involved. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I think it's something that, that they are working through right now. And I don't want to speak too much out, out of school on it without all the details in front of me, but it, it, it sounds like the more they peel the onion on that, 
particular property and structure, the, the, the more challenging it becomes. So, um, so I, I do, you know, stand to indicate that, that they would probably be coming forward. I don't know if anyone else has heard of anything else that is coming. So. Nothing here. Okay. Um, I think that was it that, that, that all I had on the, um, on the project review, I don't think there was anything else that we necessarily needed to discuss. Um, we had gone through and reviewed all of our projects to try and close them out. Uh, Terry, did you ever follow up with the DPW on a project that we were looking to close where they were going to be, they had still a little bit more work to do. Do you recall that, that one? On which project? I'm trying to remember which one it is now. I know that we were talking about the benches at McAvoy at one time. Yes, that that's was exactly what it was. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, it's been difficult to get a hold of anybody down there right now. Uh, so I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll give, I'll reach out again this week and I'll call you. Okay. Great. Great. Um. Okay. Uh, so if no one's heard anything else that we have coming down the pipe, we can be ready for. Uh, again, deadlines are uh, February 5th. So make sure people are aware if you're talking to any folks. Um, and then we'll have our next meeting in February. And we'll see based on the volume if we need to schedule a, a subsequent meeting to, to review them all. Uh, not anticipating a, a ton of that this year. So, All right. Uh, next on the agenda is the approval of minutes. So I'll make a motion on that. Uh, move, move to, to accept. accept the, sorry, move to accept the meeting, uh, meeting minutes from uh, December 10th as written. Thanks, sorry. Thank, thank you, Bill. Second. second. Thank you, CJ. All right, uh, Rick? Yes, approved. CJ? Yes. Frank? Yes. John? Yes. Bill? Yes. Terry? Yes. All right, now, Jack, I won't call on you since you weren't in attendance. So. Thank you. Uh, okay, that's uh, all I have. Anyone make a final motion? Motion, motion to adjourn. Uh, who made that, I'm sorry? Yeah, John. Yeah. John, 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 John. I have Bill second, thank you. Um, let's go ahead and uh, roll call, Rick? Yes. DJ? Yes. Frank? Yes. John? Yes. Bill? Yes. Jack? Yes. Uh, Terry? Did we lose Terry? Off. We just lost Terry. Okay, well, either way, I passed unanimously. Thank you, everybody, for your time tonight.